The early history of this gang is hard to tell because they moved a lot. What we can say is that they originated on the north side of Chicago in like 1960. The original members were actually Puerto Ricans, but this gang would move to the south side of Chicago and transform into an all Mexican gang. Let's get into this video. In a city known for its fearsome super gangs, criminal enterprise like the mob, gangs, Chicago has its own culture from graffiti on the walls to how the south side and the north side are separated. In Chicago, it's where you're born that defines who you are, not your race. This is gang life. Cartel got me working for the big faces. Federally got my car full of brick cases. Hit the pin with a grin, there ain't no faking. I was picked to my back for my shoelaces. God out, should have seen the look on their faces. All jealous cause your boy. Hey, what's up? My name's JC. I am Ron the Strong. If you are new to my channel, make sure you subscribe, hit that bell so you don't miss nothing. If you're part of my crew, mi familia, mi raza. Mi pandilla, you already know. Suantela Suburban, we got another episode of Gang Life. What's up, guys? Hey, I said we got a lot of organizations to go through, and today we are talking about one that originally started by Puerto Ricans. You got, you got to understand, you know the uh, the history in Chicago when they had a big, big like immigration uh, uh, where a lot of Puerto Ricans actually relocated into Chicago, the north side. So a lot of gangs were started, you know, uh, by Puerto Ricans. And like I've said it in the past, you know, um, a lot of the gangs back then were about race. You know, it was uh, the white gangs, the Puerto Rican gangs, the black gangs, and you know, and the Mexican gangs. And that's what it was back in the day because a lot of these gangs were you know greaser gangs that's how they originally started and a lot of it was to protect the neighborhood protect the race protect you know uh stuff like that but a lot of these gangs transform or you know they just mutate into different things um you know at one time a lot of these organizations had their own clubhouse Imagine that nowadays if you could have like your own little building with video games and stuff like that it, it would be like Pretty much headquarters to just reel in members, you know, because all the kids would be going there and and that's what it was back in the day because They even had social workers for every organization where the you know The city would talk to them and and blah blah, but they were actually doing a lot of public work, too they were cleaning up the neighborhoods and stuff like that, but some gangs keep growing, you know, and morph into other stuff, and some become extinct. Today, we are going to talk about the Villa Lobos. In 1966, the Villa Lobos moved to 18th Street and Damon in the Pilsen neighborhood from the northwest side. Their clubhouse was right behind Bishop's Chili in Pilsen. The Villa Lobos were actually very, very close ally with the Morgan Deuces and the Latin Kings. Having them always over at their parties at the clubhouse, you know, um, for events. And they were very, very tight, tight together. They were very... Back then, there was a lot of unity with different clubs that stuck together to fight other clubs and they, it's just it was a bond that was un, unbroken and untalked about like today it's fucking crazy today it's, <laughs> you got uh land kings fighting land kings two six fighting uh, two six i mean it, it's it's crazy but back then it was a lot more different you know they would have parties and events and in these clubs other clubs would show up and, and support the, the Villa Lobos were in Pilsen for actually more than 10 years. So that was a good, good run that they had. And the reason why they, we believe that they started to actually die out in Pilsen was because uh, they're actually their leader at the time went away for a murder that 
uh, happened in that area that was over some you know gang turf and stuff like that but they lost their leadership and they start to pretty much die out any organization I've, I've always said it even even in the pen like you can't have a warrior as a leader as the guy that has the yard the keys to the yard because he's gonna want to fight over everything <laughs> <laughs> and, and you can't have somebody that's too, you know, passive as a leader either because then he's going to let a lot of things go and then other organizations are going to think that you're soft and they're going to try to take your shit or attack you. So leaders have a big, big, big role to play and a big, big impact on organizations. And this is another reason why a lot of the organizations are not doing well out there now because... The feds came in, took all the big time leaders that a lot of people respected in, and everybody's killing everybody nowadays. But in 1976, they opened up shop on 30th and Drake in Little Village. This is, by this time, the Villalobos were completely a all exclusive Mexican gang. By 1980, they had a good sized hood from 30th and Drake all the way to St. Louis. In 1980, they opened up a third section on 23rd Street and Ridgeway. And this is where they actually started going to war with the 2-6. In 1981, they joined the People Nation, Five Point Star. And it was really thanks to the Land Kings because the Land Kings are actually and have always always been very very close allies of the via lobos they, they were like really really tight it's been one of the two organizations i've ever seen that were super tight and really never had no issues no problems nothing even though they opened up right on on drake 30th and drake 30th and drake today is is a very powerful you know hood of the land kings a lot of the Villalobos, by the 1990s, a lot of the Villalobos be, started to like fade out. And you know, it was due to a lot of the older members retiring, uh, you know, starting lives, getting married, having kids. And a lot of them ended up flipping Land and Kings, especially the uh, 30th and Drake. And that's how 30th and Drake is actually a powerhouse for the Land Kings. You know, they're, they're deep and a lot, they have a big, big presence there. And you know, the uh, Villalobos pretty much went into extinction. They, they faded out, and that's just the gang. You know, the, the gang itself, the name. A lot of those members ended up turning Land Kings from 30th and Drake, and that's why that hood turned into such a powerhouse, because usually what happens with these big organizations is that they swallow up smaller ones, and they become bigger. So, you know, it's, it's like, playing college ball and then going into professional. You know, it's, kids are gonna wanna go professional and not just play college, you know? So they, they, they all turned Land Kings from 30th and Drake, and that's pretty much it. The Villa Lobos are actually completely extinct to this day. There is uh, a couple of their members doing time in prison, but by now, they are probably Land Kings or have, you know, uh, flipped. Uh, and I wouldn't even call it flip because pretty much, like I said, they've always been really, really close allies. They, there was no issue with them ever. They were really tight. They helped each other a lot. And the Lion Kings always had the Villalobos back. It is what it is, guys. Hey, this is another episode of Gang Life. And like I said, there's so many organizations that I need to go through, you know, from ones that are still active to ones that are extinct. I'm trying to mix it up so that way we can kind of like, you know, not stick on the same thing. There's a lot of organizations that a lot of people don't even know about from Chicago. And that's the thing. We're going to go through all of them. So just get ready, you know, sit down, have some popcorn. Don't judge nobody, stay in your lane, live savage, and remember, you only have one life to live. Live it out here with your family, your loved ones, your kids. Remember, you don't wanna put your kids through what we went through, so make sure that you are there, you're a good father, a good mother, and lead by example. Hey, my name's JC, I am Ron Strong. 
I'll catch you guys on the rebound.